there's a lot of steps to this one. The other ones are, are really easy. But this is a 12 here. So, depending on what size you're using, this is a 12 and I'm going to use a 764 bead on it. I'm going to write uh, tweezers. That's how I like to put them on. And this thing is, weighs a ton. It's, uh, on it, there's going to be, uh, I'm going to put 12 wraps of uh, 15, 15 thousand lead. Sometimes they tie them with tungsten beads too, so it, yeah, they really get heavy. So I'm going to put the wire on first, and I'm going to use about 12 wraps. Split shot with feathers? Pretty much, yeah, no feathers. Just with the wire, the bead, and the, and the lead. And if, you, <laughs> and if you use a tungsten, a tungsten, tungsten bead, it's bead. Even, even better yet. Yeah, you know, just, it on the bottom. Yeah, <laughs> like an organ, you can't put any weight on your line or whatever. It's yeah. perfect for that. <clears throat> but I actually, I, I tie these things down to like 18s, like 10s and 18s. I'm going to get my thread on here. No, anyway. Remember I use this is lead. If you're using lead substitute, you won't have to, but with lead I always I always coat it with uh, some kind of glue because otherwise it'll oxidize on you. Okay, so I'm gonna move to the back and get part way down the bend here. I'm gonna put these biot tails on. This is probably the hardest part of the whole the whole fly. And you could use biots off of two sides if you wanted. I don't. I just rip a couple off and then. But you do want to have the curves facing, top, top, oppo opposing each other. Top to top. Huh? Yeah. Get the part here. The latest issue of Fly Tire has got a real good article about yeah, biots. If, if you guys get a chance, I would highly recommend you buy the latest issue of Fly Tire. And, uh, that was a good article, yeah. Did a, did a very good job at describing biots and uh, right and left side, the notch and ridge, smooth, really good article. Yeah, there's a couple ways you could do this now. I, I usually tie them both on at the same time, but you, you could tie them on one at a time. Uh, sometimes when I try to do them both at the same time, they'll roll on me, but I don't know if you can see that, but I, the curves are yeah. kind of opposed. And these aren't real curves, some of them really curve out. So I'm going to take it and I'm going to actually get the, uh, you know, the both sides of the hook. And I don't want them too long. They're going to be about three quarters of the length of the body, maybe. And I'm going to pinch it right there. I'm going to bring my thread up, down, and then up again. I'm going to try not to roll them too bad to the, to the other side. So they're pretty well split right there. I'm going to get about three good wraps there. And I'm just going to put some loose wraps on them up to the lead because I want to fill that part in. And just cut them off. Now, <clears throat> with a wire, you could use just one color of wire. They, they look better with two, I think. And the way I usually figure for 12, if I cut off 6 inches of wire, I can tie two flies with 6 inches of wire without wasting too much. And it's easier to hang on to that way. This is, bra this is brassy. Brassy, brassy for a 12. Probably if you're going to do a 16 or an 18, you do small, you know. If you use too small, then it takes, you have to build up too much underneath it, you know, to do it. So it's, did it proportionally there. So once I get it, I usually like to clip them even on the ends. So the whole key to getting a decent body on these things is, is the underbody. 
If it's not smooth, then nothing else is going to be smooth. The other thing I do is, is uh, whatever color you want to be first on the tails, you put on the bottom. So if you want the same color first every time, that's how you figure it. You, you put it on the bottom. I'm going to tie it in here on the side, right up against the lead. And I'm going to fill this in. Then I'm going to build this up in front here to be the same diameter as the, what my lead is. So you're right. ending up with somewhat of a taper from the yeah, of the exactly. To the yeah. Okay. If I was going to do a bigger one, I would actually be using like 140 denier thread instead of 70, and then I would switch when I get to the front because it's it just you know builds up a lot faster. So I don't want my Thread on the, <laughs> the front. And at this point, I, you know, sometimes I'll I'll glue it. I didn't bring my glue with me. But. So once you get your wire lined up, you never want to twist the wire from this point. You want to keep the wire in the same side by side. So it's kind of like wrapping the floss. Basically, yeah, you don't want to be twisting that wire because pretty soon you get a, you get a twisted body on it. And as you're wrapping it, you want to tend to kind of try to push it to, into the into the last wrap. So see, as I go around, I'm not like twisting it there. I'm making sure that it's it's staying flat all the way. And I'm pushing each each turn is going back up tight against the other one. And I'm not going to go all the way. I'm going to stop right about there. Three or four wraps on there, and then get some thread in front of it. Now, where that wire is, I want to pinch that down. So at this point, I'm going to <coughs> my, my hook flatter in the vise. So this thing's got like ten parts to it. So once you get rolling on them, then it's not too bad. But, so the next piece is some uh, holographic tinsel. So this is part of the wing case. So I'm going to tie this in, and I want it right on the top, right down the center. And where I want my thread to end up is right about the point of the hook. And the, <clears throat> the next part of the wing case is thin skin. And for this one, I cut it about a, about a millimeter and a half wide. The way this stuff comes, it comes on a sheet. You can see it's got a backing to it. And what you don't want to do is cut it and strip a bunch, because what happens to this stuff is it, it ends up, yeah, it wraps up like a snail. So I try not to uh, strip any more off than I, I'm going to use for a while. This is kind of what it what it does, and that's pretty mild. Eventually, it'll just coil up into a little ball. So, and I usually tie it in with the curved side up. I don't think it makes any difference because I'm going to end up putting epoxy on it anyway. So, probably doesn't make any difference. It's a black color. This is black. Yeah, but you could you could put what they make it in like 20 different colors. So, so I'm going to just lay it on top, and I'm going to tie it down right where I ended the. Uh, Holographic lasher do. And I'm going to get it down right to the bead and I'm going to come back. And this is uh, Arizona Synthetic Peacock. It's 
it's kind of a cool looking dubbing, but it's a real it's a real pain to, to dub. It's real they cut it real short, it's kind of coarse, but it's got a lot of flash to it. And this one we've got. Probably like trying to dub steel wool. It is, yeah. But once you get it started, it's not too bad. You, once you can catch it, it's not too bad. So I'm only going to put put it on part way, and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to put my thread right in the middle of it. So at this point, <clears throat> use my rubber legs. And this is this would be size small. I think they call this centipede legs or something. It comes in million colors, but this is brown for this one. I'll tie it in black and other, other colored flies. So one strand of this stuff will tie a couple of flies. So I'm going to take this one strand. I'm going to tie the far side first. Put it right in the middle. I'm get like two wraps on it. Kind of get it where I want it. This side. Two more wraps. Okay. Then I'm going to finish my dubbing. I'm just going to take the thin skin and try to get right in the middle. I'm going to get wrapped. I'm right behind the bead. I'm going to get two wraps right there. I'm going to take the holographic tinsel. Two more wraps. Okay. I'm just going to trim this off. Put a few more wraps in there, and I'm just going to whip it off. Okay, so for the length of the legs, I usually I'll take this back pair and I'll cut them off just about the length of the tails. And then I'll take the second pair and cut them about the end of the tails also. So I'd rather have them a little long than short. I can always trim them off later. And here comes the cool part. I used to put five minute epoxy on these things. I mix up a batch, and I get maybe I get maybe three before it started getting hard on me. And I'd screw the last one up. Here's the thing: this oh, the one that fit the car this is TV. called this is called Bondic. It's a it's a UV cure, and this thing is perfect, man, for little flies. I've got all the I've got the clear cure goo and all that stuff, but this thing is is ideal for flies down like 24s got this little pinpoint on it and you just squeeze this thing out put as much as you want on there 
and the other end has got the UV. The other end's the light. Yeah, and then you just take your bodkin and you, whenever you do this stuff, you want to get a little epoxy on the wire so it'll bond there, and then you want to get some on the bead too. And, you, and the nice thing about this is I can take all day to get get it where I want it. Whereas with the epoxy, I had to really get moving on it, and then. I'm done.